After all the absurdly awful things I'd heard about the Legend of Zelda cartoon series when my brother returned with the complete series on DVD one day, I expected it to be thoroughly awful. And I was not only surprised to find out that it wasn't thoroughly awful, but it was well above average in some respects, especially for 80s cartoons. I feel like the first and most important thing we should talk about is the characterizations, because that seems to be what most people focus on and get upset about. They didn't seem to like that Link had a character, and whenever I heard about Link's character, he was portrayed as incredibly obnoxious and unlikable. And yeah, he is an obnoxious brat, but the story is aware of this and draws attention to that fact, and it's part of his dynamic with Zelda. Link has considerably more going for him than generic noble action heroes in the fact that he doesn't like his job at the castle protecting the Triforce, he would rather be adventuring. He is aggressively heterosexual and hits on Zelda at every opportunity, and he's generally childish and does whatever he can to get out of responsibilities, so that way he can go adventure or do something exciting. But the part people often neglect to mention is that he's also still a hero. Yeah, he jokes around a lot, and he's incredibly sexual and childish, but whenever someone's in danger, he immediately runs to the scene, regardless of any danger or consequences involved where his own life is concerned. When the chips are down and someone needs rescued, he is absolutely the most selfless person imaginable. I suppose what I mean to say is that he's more human than I think people wanted. He has a lot of expectations, desires, and insecurities, and I guess that's not what people wanted to see in Link. I'm not saying Link behaves perfectly like a real person would, but he behaves more like a person than his video game counterparts, and he's a selfless hero when he needs to be, and when he doesn't need to be, he's incredibly flawed. I really like this version of Link because he may throw pouty fits and be childish, but whenever he hears someone scream for help in a 10 mile radius, he rushes to the scene immediately, and that's what matters most. Now that we're done with the characterization of Link, it's time to move on to the cartoon itself, and this is very much an action cartoon. I was very surprised that, in spite of the show's obvious low budget, there was quite a bit of creative choreography, a genuine mix of slapstick and some sort of acrobatic shenaniganry that one really shouldn't attempt with a budget as low as this. There is a surprisingly large amount of fighting in this show, and almost all of it is well scripted. Usually shows with a budget this low try to stay away from action scenes, unless absolutely necessary. But this one delivers on its promise of being action heavy. The action scenes also reference and often make use of the license. They include such things as item drops, new weaponry, bombs, and all kinds of various gadgets from the actual game series. It generally enhances the show, and makes the action scenes more engaging. And perhaps most importantly, unlike a lot of other 80s action cartoons, the villain feels like a genuine threat. He comes close to victory in many episodes, and there are a lot of times where the heroes either lose or nearly lose. The show keeps itself from getting stale in the long run by introducing various adaptations of Hyrulean magic and some light world building, and it's just all around a slightly above average action cartoon not nearly the train wreck that people made it out to be. And ideally, that's where this video would end. It's an above-average 80s action cartoon where the action scenes are incredibly well-scripted and choreographed, the characterization is well above the average for the standard cartoon hero of the time period, and uh, there's some light world building mixed in to keep things entertaining if you're not all that enchanted by the action. For the first six episodes, at least. I have no idea what in the hell happened after episode 6, because they didn't change writers or directors, but suddenly the show takes a sharp downward turn. Voices start coming out of the wrong characters, the voice actors start reading the script wrong, the animation gets noticeably worse, the stories become more juvenile, Link's character is dumbed down to nearly half of the depth it once was, and he starts using his catchphrase at least three times per episode. And suddenly the show just becomes that awful thing everyone warned me about. In summary, if you watch episodes 1 through 6, hey, it's a pretty okay action cartoon, especially for the 80s. But if you watch past episode 6, I guess I'll let Ganon sum up my feelings on that. 